Okay, well, I'll try to whip it out. Do you want me to whip it out? Yeah, show us what you got. Why, are you scared? Are you scared to show us, show us the goods? Only for money. Is it on? Yes. One, two, three. Andy. And I'm Rich. And welcome back to Get Gaming, the channel by two gamers with a Y for gamers with or without a Y. That's exactly right. And today we're bringing you another monthly math. Today we're going to be covering the month of May 2023 and what a wild ride it was. <laughs> And a very sad month, too, because this was the month that John left us. He left us. He left us. He left us. To move back into his mom's marina. You know, that's fine. I might have sent him a very emotional text uh, last night slash this morning <laughs> under the influence of uh, Sir Whiskey. So, but I stand by every word. That's my credo. No regrets. You have no regrets? Like, not even a single letter. We love you, John. Yes. So, are you ready for some stats? Yes. In the month of May, 2023, we played 43 unique plays, 32 of which were unique games, eight of which were new to us, slash you, slash me. There was quite a bit of overlap on that. Actually, I think most of these games were also new to me, other than a couple of Phil Walker Hardings, praise be. <laughs> And we had 13 game days and we played with nine different people, not as many different people, because over half those game days, probably more than half, were, were with John. Right. We were slamming through stuff right before he left because he moved May 15th. So the first two weeks of the month were very <laughs> skewed very heavily, but we were still um, getting regular, regular plays. And I think those numbers are kind of average for, for a lot of people that are, you know, hardcore. We're hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it works pretty well just going for these things chronologically like we did before, yeah. just hitting the things, you know, because on the first of the month, we played Brew. The last time we played Brew, and I have a feeling probably the last time you'll ever play Brew. No, no, I'll play Brew. Are you sure? Yeah, I mean, it's never going to be one of my favorite games. I, but... I still like Brew. I like it a lot. Um, and we had this conversation in the last monthly math video about how much I like Brew and how much... You, I think you just feel like the game is flawed or it just doesn't jive with you. It just wasn't clicking for you. So... I don't know, maybe having taken now a month long break, coming back to it. It's very possible. Just, you know, it fills a really good niche when I just want like a really quick worker placement game. Like, I really do feel like it's like almost like a more condensed Euro as far as... I was going to say, it's like Fisher Price, my first Euro. Uh, kind of. <laughs> we got another fort. It had been a while since we played. I still love Fort. Great, great two-player oh, game. God. We've still never played it at more than two. It's not a two-player only okay, game. Okay, that was what I forgot to tell you about the other day. Yeah, I substitute teach sometimes. Yeah, and he does. The, the class that I was with, oh my God. These Mr. boys Rich, Mr. reminded me so much. They even look like some of the characters in Fort. It was so funny. I'm wow. like, okay, I see where... They, they, they probably went to some school. Sure to life. <laughs> Kyle Farron captured the essence of obnoxious young boys in his Fort art. Yeah, yeah. Fort is great. It's always fun. I love Very fun death manipulating building game. the little uh, pizzas and toys. Those are fun. Anyway, I won't say anything more. Uh, you can no, no, it's it's good. It's a great game. Mm -hmm. I finally acquiesced to play Q-Birds again, only to teach it. No, we didn't teach it to Ruthie. We were you, just playing it. You, you did, and... I won! Yes! You... Hell froze over! I want to cry so bad, but I don't think I can spare the moisture. I Not wanted only did you win, but I think you beat everybody else's ass in that game. Oh, that, it was like not even close. Total annihilation. No, Ruthie did play that with us, didn't she? She did. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She seemed to like it. It's a fun... It's Now, talk about art. Card. I just love those little the cubes. bird cards. The cube so birds. Cube birds. Cube birds, yeah. Do you get it? 
Me? I got it. You do really like that game. I don't know. why. It was one of those games where I really loved it on BGA, but then once I started playing it physically, my, my love kind of fizzled out, and I'm not, not sure why. I don't think it's a fault of the game itself. I think it's a very fine, fun, quick card game. I think it's super clever mechanically. Um, I like the art. I just don't know. It just doesn't spark joy for me anymore. Um, so maybe there's something wrong with me. too... Maybe well, I'm incapable of love. No, oh, that's not a, true. Because I love you. It's a simple card game, you know. Maybe it's just too simple for you. Speaking of simple, we played the downfall of Pompeii. Yeah, you're throwing pe meeples into the volcano, essentially. That has been staying in a steady rotation because it's quick. Oh, everybody loves that volcano, too. <laughs> this is, you're literally it's throwing so meeples into like, this yeah. volcano thing. This is what more Americans need. They need... Throwing people into the volcano? Well, they need symbolic I agree. Uh, throwing of people in the it's volcano. Very to let Yeah, let out some of that Goodbye, Pat anger. Robinson. <laughs> Boop into the volcano. More Friday the 13th, though. It's really like pulling tea for you to convince me to play that game, too. Am I? Do I just not like some card games? I don't think games? you like card games. I, I love Six Nymphed. That's the exception to that rule. And I love Six Nymphed too. And that one is so similar in many respects to mm -hmm. Friday the 13th. They I almost agree. We are have this similar. You know, but yeah, I know. There's no point in blaming I, it. So, allegedly, Dr. Reiner Knizia claims he doesn't play other people's games, and he's a goddamn <laughs> liar. I know he's... He, Oh. He stole the oh. idea from oh. Six Nymphed. I, I'm gonna call him out. But let's just be real. Not everything he shits is gold. Okay, get over it, John. <laughs> I'm gonna have to yeah. cut this part out. You People are gonna add me to. in the comments. They're gonna be like, oh, going don't you come to. for the doctor. I'm like, okay, he wears a freaking bow tie and he's a math nerd. Big whoop. Um, I do like some well, of his games. Well, some of his games that we played were just awful. But. So we did, one of the games we did play this month that was Reiner Knizia that I really liked, actually, was San Francisco. <laughs> I'm kind of wishing, well, we just... I want to play it again. I, I, was I can't, I can't, there's a game I'm not allowed to mention because that'll be in the June, but I'm kind of wishing yeah. that we maybe had gotten San Francisco instead. Cause there was, was a choice. The price, but, mm. There was a choice, and I don't necessarily regret that choice. Don't regret. Because, I, I think, mean, yeah, in another year, you're going to see it. San Francisco is going to be, like, marked down to $10 on the secondhand market. Everyone's going to be trying to exactly. offer a copy, you know. So, I really enjoyed that game because that is very much an area control game. So, you're, like, building the city of San Francisco. But, basically, you have the city board and you're drafting cards to place. It's kind of like a tableau building. And then the person who has the most of certain cards in each row will get the scoring at the end. It's a very low scoring game. Like you can get half a point in this game, which is sounds weird, but it kind of makes sense when you do it. And you're getting your little, you're building a route with the little cable cars. That was kind of cute. You have like mm -hmm. these little skyscrapers, you know. It's actually a fairly light game. It's a lighter Kinetia. Mm -hmm. And... I was just sort of very resistant to it going in because, again, see my previous comments, which I may or may not stand by in the future. I may have to eat my words. But this one I really enjoyed. Um, I thought it was pretty easy to get in and out of. It's like an hour game. Yeah, um, it was okay. I know... You were doing really badly on it. I think you I, struggling I, you to know, understand it, it's, the strategy. I I, yeah, there was that, um, but also... And there's this drafting mechanic where it's like you're piling up cards on the different things, and when you take uh, draft cards, you have to take a whole stack, but then you are limited. You can't draft again for like a certain while. You have to take these tokens, which keep you from drafting too much, too quickly. So. I just felt like it didn't really have anything to do with San Francisco. It should no. be like a game where you have to avoid stepping on homeless people oh, or dog shit on the side. The, the cards didn't or, smell of urine. Exactly. It, I mean, it, it, you know, it's just not really true to San Francisco. It's very, the art is beautiful. I love the whole pastel aesthetic they had going on in this game. It's a beautiful production, but it's a very overproduced light area control card based euro game. Yeah, it's so euro that it really It could be has any nothing. city. They should have just called it well, they couldn't call it my city. <laughs>
Well, my island is coming out. I love Wait, that. That's I'm, that's Ryan Kinsey too. Yeah, I love that I'm talking uh, trash, but we just mentioned like a couple of games that I really like by him. So you know, I'm already gonna eat my words, and it's been like what, like two minutes <laughs> since I was just trashing. Yeah, him. he's a great designer. Okay, you just don't like bow ties. You have a prejudice against people wearing. It's bow ties. weird. It's weird. Why is he always wearing a bow tie? It's creepy. <laughs> Am I wrong? Check off the number of people that are not going to No, no boat. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Unsubscribe. <laughs> who else do you want to uh, possibly... Um... I'm never going to talk trash about Phil Walker Hurt and Praise Be. Because we have at least like three games on this list to talk about by him. And he is your favorite designer. So, I mean, Reiner Knizia is just any designer that people, you know, wax poetic on is fair game in my personal opinion. Well, because sure. people get, you know, get on their soapbox and they're, they put on the, their goggles, you know, about it because they're fans. They love their work. Uva Rosenberg is one that I'm probably not going to talk too much trash about ever, even though I could make well, similar criticisms he, against he's it. He's definitely one of your favorites, I would say. Oh, he's such a dad, you know? He's just a dad. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, we played Iki again. I'm glad we're kind of trying to keep that in the rotation, though every time we do it, we have to totally relearn it, which is because there's these yeah. little rules in that game that we always like, oh, wait. Yeah, that other but thing. But that's my criticism about all Euros, is that sure. we, unless you're playing it, like, if we were, like, Iki, forget just general gamers, Experts. but we were, like, into the world of Iki and just, like, Still yeah, like if you're playing it all the time, I'm sure you could learn it, but when you only play it, like, maybe Iki is my favorite someone. worker placement game, though. I yeah. just love being able to upgrade the workers and that being a changing thing. And there's almost a semi-cooperative element in that game. By the way, we were ahead of the curve. Oh, yeah, you guys are some... witnesses because Iki got nominated for the Spiel des Jahres. Oh, yeah. It so should win. We so. have... Uh-huh. Uh, we've been proselytizing. Everyone's like, Iki, didn't that game come out in 2015? Like, yes, it's a reprint. And yes, the Spiel des Jahres is based on when it was published in Germany because it's a German award, gamers. It's not It's not an award for the gaming hobby. And I like that people think that it is. Right. It's for children's games. It's a children's game award. Cannot, That's what it is. Uh, unless they're freakish children, I can't see. <laughs> well, they're German. <laughs> I can't imagine any children liking Iki. Well, it much. was for the Kenner Spiel, which is like the expert rung. Oh, oh yeah. Now that... I Which, it, they always have things that are supposed to be, like, next step expert ones. And people like, that's not a very heavy game. Because there are some games that, it you know, are considered... Heavy. Well, the other ones that were nominated um, for that category, people are like, that's pretty light. That's weird that that got nominated for the Kenner Spiel. I'm like, again, it's expert for a German child or German family. All the Ken the, the Spiel is all family with games, essentially. Right, right. And maybe some games that are just above family weight and Iki's a medium weight euro so they only ever nominate medium weight what most gamers would consider medium weight games for the counter spiel and I think it always confuses especially Americans because they have this idea that the spiel is like the academy awards for board games and it's not really in my personal opinion I mean we have American awards like there's the Golden Geek Award nobody ever talks about that one the BGG has their own list of like top games of the year that everyone votes on which I think that list is a little more accurate of what people really would consider to be the best games of the year. So that list made a little more sense to me. Except Stonewall Uprising wasn't on it, but Votes for Women did make it. So hey, people are getting slightly woker, I guess. I don't know why we, st we started talking about this. Oh, Iki. Yeah. Well, that's, Good game. that's exciting. We need to play it more. We introduced John to a lot of games, a lot of two-player only games. Longhorn. You talked him long. I did. Talk <laughs> and Longhorn is one of my favorite two-player games, okay. and it's a Bruno Cathala. And since we're talking Bruno about Cathala. these very famous designers, I'm never going to talk trash about Bruno. Either. No, everything's a hit, not a hack. Unlike that other guy. <laughs> I maybe I just like Bruno more because he's French. It's just because you is like. Is he Belgian? Name. Spanish? I don't know. Mm. You also taught John Dragonheart, another one of our favorite two-player only games. Thanks, Hannah. Oh, 
Oh, was you you heard about that through Hannah? I don't know. I heard about it through her, but she's the one I play that game with the most. But we played it. A Hi, good Hannah. Amount, so. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be get gaming video if we weren't name checking Hannah. Dragonheart. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? I mean, it, it's just what is so fun about that game? It's card slapping fun. What's going on here? Oh, sir, I'm a wrestler. Oh, oh. You're just slapping the cards and then taking the cards. Take, making stacks I and do, taking no, stacks. Yeah, I do like that. It's, it's again, I don't know. I love card games. I know you're like, you're more about the tile games. I can, I, I just know that you're more on tile games. It's true. I like. I, I guess I do like. Crab people. Crab people. That kind of, I like the. You know, oh, you've got these, this card, these hand of cards, and then, like, choosing which cards to play when. Hand That's management. Hand yeah. management. Yeah. I do like hand management games. Such a fun game. That is, like, when I want to play, like, a card game, like a simple card game, that's the one that I like to reach for. Yeah, Dragonheart is definitely... Because it's so... It is pretty quick. Um, it's not, like, the quickest. Wait, you can play that solo, can't you? No. No. Oh, okay. Oh. I mean, there's probably someone's done a solo hack, but I'm of the opinion of some games shouldn't be played solo. You know what I mean? Like, I could play it solo, but do I really want to? Is that really no, the experience I'm probably, looking for uh, out of the game? You know what I mean? It's like, not complex enough for it to be challenging. Yeah, I have plenty it's... of good solo games for me to just be, you know, right. making... So there's a solo... There's a fan-made solo variant for Rajas of the Ganges that has, like, a little bot Automa deck that you can play with. But again, I have no desire to do that because a big part of that game is it's a race with other people. So it's true, you know. I, I couldn't see playing that one by myself either, and I love yeah. that game. Um, and then John introduced us to Jiraku, which is a really good area control oh, yeah. game with trick taking, kind of like yeah. Brian Board. You're moving your little Dymo meeple against the board, and every time I move my Dymo, I went. I know. Grr. Oh, Grr. yeah, that was fun. <laughs> a cute little dime. Is that one even like, available? Yeah, yeah. There's a new edition with a bigger board. He had oh, the original yes. edition, which has, like, these little tiles that you put together, but everything was sliding around. It and was. All the people, it was very messy. And That I, was the only criticism. I liked the game, though. Yeah, so the deluxe edition is very available on Amazon and um, reasonably priced. At, I think it's, like, $37 or something like that. Very good game. If you like trick-taking, and you like trick-taking as a mechanic to do area control, uh, but you can only play it at three, I think the Deluxe oh, Edition yeah. does have a two-player variant. But I don't know if it would be any good, because, I don't know, I mean, a lot of area control games do work perfectly fine at two, I think, and that one, I think, mm -hmm. the space is tight enough that it would probably work fine. <laughs> yeah, I just really enjoyed playing that with John. That was really fun. That was fun. But he really that. likes that game, and... Uh, we just love seeing John enjoying himself, you know, because we love him so much. <laughs> and he loves one of us. Well. <laughs> and then we introduced John to Mariposas. I don't think he was as enamored with it as we are, but he was respectful in his commentary because we were trying to proselytize that game. <laughs> Because I think it's very um, underrated. I do too. If you love butterflies, if you like an eco theme, I think that is a must. I, you know, there, there's just, I like games that have additional strategies. There's different ways to make points. It's like very I think of Animal Kingdoms is kind of similar to that in that, you know. Right, because you have those variable cards. So each game you have kind of a different set of parameters. Yeah. Right, so I like that built in uh, variability. I do too. It makes and it feel fresh each time. Mari poses. Yeah, you can't. I can guarantee you're not going to just choose the same strategy every time and and always win I at mean, that game. Some people might. I'm sure there's people that are just like, well, I'm just going to keep all my butterflies close. But you have to get your butterflies to a certain point before you can really breed them. Because there's too many other like you know a lot of times it's like has to be north of Atlanta. You got to be breeding north yeah. of Atlanta. 
Not always, just if you're trying to get those particular. It seems like things. Atlanta's like a. I think you do gotta. A you do kind of gotta get your butterflies a certain area north. You can't just hang out in that one little tunnel nope. at the beginning of the board. You kind of do have to move them. Actually, I would love to play Mariposas again, like soon, because Let's I would, right when we're done I filming know, here. I know. You I know? totally would love to. Play I love that, that game. game so much, and Elizabeth Hargrave has been liking my comments on Twitter, so now I'm more inclined to like her game. <laughs> Elizabeth Hargrave is a real bro. She has this whole list that she started on BGG, which is just she's trying to catalog all the games by women designers oh, that cool. board gamers yeah. would be interested in. Well, and we it's have quite a lot of them. Yeah. We do. We <laughs> so, them, so. Because we love women designers. And she was talking about no, there because are. They're great games, that's why. Like, yeah, and she's talking about there's a lot of gamers that only their play groups are mostly men and we are like so the opposite of that because our gamer group is <laughs> mostly women mostly women except for us <laughs> that's, that's right and John and you John know and John is like kind of an anomaly <laughs> our play group which is so funny but yeah go woman designers and another new to us game this month three sisters I finally got three sisters oh, which yeah. is a roll and write where you're making your garden grow I love it so much it is so combo tastic you guys like three sisters is basically Basically, Hadrian's Wall light, which is to say, it is not a light game. It is so. It's not, not complex light. mechanically, but it's once you get deep enough into the game, those combos are really hard to track. Is my main criticism yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it gets you like, ooh, and I get to cross this off, which lets me cross this off, which then triggered this thing to cross off, and that makes triggers this other thing again, and then I can cross that off, and that re triggers. And, the Andy thing. loves the combo tastic stuff, I love and combos. I'm a little less. On. I like two things. You know Not what? Not as like that is just wow. I uh, I was saying to um John because John was the one that introduced me to it actually um because he had his copy too. and I'd wanted to play it for like I don't know like at least a year or something like that because okay. I'd heard a lot of good things and I knew the theme was going to be something I'd be really into because I love gardening <laughs> and plants. And if you're looking for a true romance, you could help me with my plants. Oh. And fruit, fruit trees, and shed time. I like getting a lot of me time in the shed. And there's a lot of engine building in that game. And what it is I like about games like that is because I just love the engine building aspect, which most mm -hmm. combo games are about building that engine to then be able to create those potential combos. And I realized though, I was saying to John, because he we were playing it and his combos were starting to get really out of control, and he's like this is kind of overwhelming right now. <laughs> I'm like kind of like freaking out. Like these combos are so ridiculous. And I was saying to him, I think Hadrian's Wall does a better job of giving you physical components to handle to help you track the combos. Mm -hmm. Because in Hadrian's Wall, mm -hmm. you do kind of have those crazy combos, but every time you do something, you're placing a meeple. You have to use a meeple as a resource in order to do that thing. So every time you're triggering something, you're literally trading in a meeple so you have something to handle so you don't lose track of what you're doing as much and i think in three sisters it's just very like wait i always forget to do something and i'm like oh wait i forgot to do this thing did i do that thing i can't remember if i did it already or not and it does have like this little um journal section on one of the sheets to kind of make notes for yourself but i find i just generally write the the abilities I've unlocked in the shed there, just so that I don't forget about those. But mm -hmm. it's like not really enough space to be like, okay, I'm gonna track every part of this thing, you know. So I, I know we you really a lot. love this game. This is the uh, game we played the most in May, by the way, because <laughs> we played it like six times. I did. Well, did not, I play? I you played it I played. Three, three times. Three times. And I played it solo. It's like one of my new favorite solo games, actually. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that big of a fan. I do think it has some things to recommend it. It's just, yeah, those games are, I, I still haven't completely gotten into games that are like paper and pencil. So, so you're saying you don't like, you don't like the flipping rights. Mm. You don't like feeling like you're doing homework. That's what I really think it is. It's just something, Excellent. it's not rewarding. I have to say what you just said about Hadrian's Wall. That that made total sense to me because manipulating, placing meeples. It's, it the tactile feels more, part of board mm -hmm. games is what you enjoy. Yeah, too, as well. yeah. I, I'm more tactile and that game just is too, almost like I would say it's too heady. It's a game you're playing up in your head. I don't usually play games that way. I like to like project myself into the space of 
the game, you know, mm-hmm. onto the board or and and really honestly, games with the board are important to me too. I, if you... Then we played a lot of I Found Bigfoot this month because we were filming it. I don't know when that video is going to come out or is this a secret? I'm gonna have to ask John if that video is supposed to be a secret or not. Probably not. I don't think so. Oh, I know, I missed the Chupacabra. You missed the Chupacabra already? Um, I miss Mothman, Mothman. Mothmina. That's I what we called her. I, I named her Mothmina. You did? You know, Mrs. Mothman. No, she's not married. She's, she's a single she's lady. She's a single woman and she don't need no man. She's blinded by the light. Didn't know she sang. I thought she rapped or whatever. And then another new to us game, not new to me, but new to you, because you found it at Goodwill for five dollars. Or was it three ninety nine? What was the game again? Imhotep. Oh, Imhotep. Now see, I loved Imhotep. I like it a little more that I played it with you physically. It's a good two player game. Is it is. I don't know. I, we haven't really tried it with more. This is this is how I know, though, that I'm a themer more so than a thinker, because every time I play that game, I'm just like putting rocks on a boat, then I'm moving the boat to then dump those rocks off. That's the game. I mean, it's not it's the most exciting fun. thing. I love docking the boat. <laughs> Just manipulate. It's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's my rocks, ready or not. <laughs> Hello, Pharaoh. <laughs> um, well, it's not my favorite for the Walker Hardy, but it's still good. It's solid. You know, I, I like the different, game. I don't know, domains in which you can, like, you, and we you, haven't even done the advanced side of the boards. They are, you can flip them I think over it'll and have be more. Spots. I think you'll continue to like that game. We just need to maybe push through and you go to the harder. Stuff. I like seeing you having a good time. So I will mm. never say no when you want to play in Tap. Have I said no? No, we didn't. It's true, because I love you. Oh. My gift to you. We got another Animal Kingdoms in. We taught it to Ruthie. So I guess Ruthie is now our official John replacement for game day. Sorry, John, but, you know, we had to, <laughs> we we had had to, to fill, fill our hole somehow. And if you're not going to help us fill our hole, we're going to have to get Ruthie to do it for us. Hi, Ruthie, who is one of our subscribers, by the way. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 Uh, she quite enjoyed Animal Kingdoms, and Jamila was there, so we had uh, Animal Kingdoms at four, which I enjoy that game at more than two, I've decided. I, I think you're right. That's it's one area of those control games. It's and... more fun if there's more people. Yeah, that's another. Steve Armini, the dad Eni. That's what Dad-ini? I call him. Dadini. Our uh, the man Eni, <laughs> who we hopefully we are going to meet at RageCon because him and John, he's like John's mentor. And yeah, that's a really great game. Naveen from Before You Play is the one that really proselytized that game and really turned me on to it. Otherwise, I would have never like heard of it or known that that game was a thing. So I and also it turns had... out we got, we finally solved because his version... Wait, now when you got that game, it was used, right? Yeah, I got it used. The little wood. The animeeples don't really match the animals on the cards because... There's no velociraptors on the cards, but there are velociraptor meeples and duck meeples for some reason. And John was saying that that's the Kickstarter edition. I know. And those, all I can say meeples. is I love those little meeples. The little, They're I the especially best. love placing my little alligator meeple. I always try to match the animeeples I'm putting down to the terrain type I'm putting them in, which you don't have to do that really. It doesn't really matter um, mechanically in that game, but it's just fun to, you know, put the alligators in and the I like wetlands. To, I like to quack when I put the duck. Quack. Down. Quack. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> Wake everybody up at the table. That is a really great gateway game, you know? Yes. And in yes. and out in yes. an hour, get those points. Did I win? I don't remember who won, and no. you know, I don't care. Who it doesn't wins. matter. It doesn't it's matter. not about the destination, it's about the journey exactly. and the people you go on that journey with. That's true. On the journey. You finally browbeat me into playing Cascadia again. I know. I I don't understand why you're not a bigger fan of Cascadia. It's Ver- Verdant has stolen that place in my heart. 
And just, I play Vernet so much solo. And I have gone through some of the solo campaign in Cascadia. And I enjoy Cascadia. Does it? It's not the one that sparks the most joy for me. Also, I still love Calico. I did teach Calico to John this month as well. And he quite enjoyed it. I'm glad I got to play that one again. And I was like, oh, damn, I forgot how to be good at this game. Because I did okay. I didn't break 50, which I was upset about. But, you know. Um, hard game. It's really hard. As far as a puzzly game, I understand why you like Cascadia more. Because it's more open. So it's a... Uh... Yeah. It, oh, and the very animals. Good game, I'm game. a total animal lover. Anything so. with animals, we have an yeah. MO. Yep. Or cryptids, mm. in the case of my family. Mm. Oh, God. You're going to love those cryptids. Coming to Kickstarter soon. Yeah. They're really cute. Especially I, the Chupacabra. Uh, it looks kind of like a Chihuahua. <laughs> Don't forget Nessie. You know, Even though I think it's supposed away. to have a goat head, isn't the Chupacabra? Yeah. <laughs> On the last weekend John was here, we introduced him to even more games, such as Babel which I played with him. That's a two-player only game by Uva Rosenberg, actually. That is very, very aggro, <laughs> which is why you don't like it. Like, no, no, game, I, it's very, it's like you, there is thievery. It's definitely, you're you going gotta to attack. You got to lie, attack. cheat, and steal. And you, you got to, never you got to reach across the table and punch the other person in the face if you want to win at this game. I never said I was a role model. But what about like, <laughs> it is so aggressive. It's it about war. Aggressive. In Mesopotamia. I think I could... It, it's just games like that. I it's just, a card game. It's, I'm, I'm not going to be in that mood that often because it's rare that I am. But when I am, then I would enjoy it. You know what you don't like about that game? Is that it's all about building up your temples. It's all about getting your sandcastles knocked over. Like, that's what that game is about. So you can't get too precious about, ooh, look, I finally built the sixth layer of my temple because someone's going to come along and say, well, I'm just going to play this card here and steal your temple or just straight up destroy it just out of spite. <laughs> and so it's... If you like high player interaction and you like like yeah, kind of battler of, style of mm -hmm. game, that's that's a really solid one and nice. I think it's bombs. a good game. It's just you know I would just say it's not really to my liking. Mm -hmm. And then we introduced John to Juicy Fruits. Now I don't think John like we're both crazy about Juicy Fruits, but my impression was John was like mm, he he like a little lukewarm. I think he he caught onto the whole slide puzzle element of that game a lot more quickly, and I'm still not that good at being efficient with that side puzzle. I could not Things understand how about. he was doing that. It was like. What? How did he get so... Oh, boom, here's man. a boat. Boom, here's a boat. Boom, here's I a know. boat. I know. I was just shocked. It's like, whatever. I should have paid closer attention to how he was moving his. But he... Yeah. Uh, the that, master at work. The, that particular game that we played, and I frequently do win it at Juicy Fruits. Um, but what I noticed is that time... And you're supposed to really, when you're, when you're um, setting out your orders... Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're supposed to do it um, randomly, but I, a lot of times I have started like I'll do two, two, four, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, and then on the back side, you know. You're curating your beaches. A little bit. Sometimes I have done that. That's cheating. It's, it is. I never said I was a role model. But what about... But I just feel like every... <clears throat> well, basically what happened is when we played with John, I wasn't doing that. And I just got a lot of really low yield... That That is a flaw, I think, in the game. Because depending on the particular points, because each of the boats are points, like you could have less amount of points to possibly get even if you complete all your orders than another person. So I think that is kind of a flaw. Uh, anyway. I mean, I would have been okay with other people kind of curating their beaches too. It's like, as long Maybe. as they're not like only taking the most I well, mean, that would I... That make the setup take even longer. Uh, <laughs> but I know that's why I lost that time because mm. it's just, it just wasn't enough I, weren't, I wasn't getting enough points from I still really love that game. I want to get back orders. to it solo so I can get good at it again. I feel like it's one of those games like Calico. Like, if I haven't played it in a while, I'm especially bad at it. Mm. But I still really like it. It's chonky fruit meeples, man. Fruitples. The whole Bananas. thing of... of, of uh, well... Pomegranates. And, and you're, you're... Mango steams. You're uh, bribing these officials. Limes. So you can Bribing get... them with limes, yes. And bananas and oranges. And pomegranates. 
and Magnus means. Yes. We get too distracted by the bribing. That's true. Because it's really the order of operations is you got to get those boats off first before you worry too much about getting tiles you can't fit or move on your board anyway. I don't know. I think it depends on who you're playing with. When I play with you, I know I've got to. We're all about real. that banana republic. You know, we're, we're bribing all up. The, our government is so corrupt. <laughs> who cares about growing fruit? We got officials to bribe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in any case, it's just a really fun game. I agree. And speaking of fun games, we introduced him to Clickbait, another Reiner Knizia. I know I talked so much trash about Reiner Knizia earlier, and we're talking about like three different Reiner You might have seen better just cut that part out. You can at me in the comments, okay? I'm quick to check a bitch if she is out of line. He enjoyed that. Nice party game. You know, you're making slogans for ridiculous products. Oh like, my God. Know, fairly accurate pregnancy tests. That the This was the... Um, Yeti perfume. Next to the last time we got together with John and he was just... Every game we were playing, he was winning and schooling us on. Like, we're just like... It was getting you quite a It was really... No, but it was just too one-sided or something. And yeah. and so then when we did start playing um, Fun Click City, Bait, after I thought, that. okay. Because we introduced him to our favorite So Bad It's Good game, Fun City, which is a uh, roller move from the 80s with the clock and the crazy cards. And he just, I don't know, his rolls were just good. He was rolling sixes galore and he was just like, Yeah, boom, he boom, was boom, having boom. incredible luck that night. I mean, you know? I think a lot of it is skill and he has good. Um, no, I'm pretty sure he rolls a witch. Okay. Well, that's what I always have thought about Shelley. Come, little children, the time's come to play. She has... I don't, honest to God, we could get into a whole discussion of this, but people... We are but mere feel, mortals. <laughs> yeah, no, but I have known people that I felt had, like, magic powers. Well, when you sold your soul to the devil and wrote your name in his book... I cannot write my name. I will guide thy then another new to us game this month, new to you, because I had played it before, was Gizmos, another Phil Walker Hardy, praise be. Sky. Engine building game. I love that game. I love engine building again. This is just engine building, nothing but the engine building itself. So yeah, I, I, I took to that game. I, I like it. The marbles. It's all about getting your hand in the cookie jar and like anything clickety clack, clickety clack, you know? Um, it's Cause just, otherwise it's pretty abstract, you know? It's like, Oh, we're at the science fair. We're making contraptions or robots. Or yeah. Something. I don't, I don't even know that. It's, Whatever. Just, it's a card game and yeah, building card. Now game. that's a good question because for some reason that game gets a total pass from me because of the marbles, I think. Whereas yeah. you were, we were talking about San Francisco and games that are a little abstract. But, and if they're too thematically... Pasted on. Weak, yeah. I don't tend to like them, but Gizmos, oh my God. It is It is like an easy Euro. Well, I would call it a Euro by any means. So, there's a lot of strategy in that game. Sure. I mean, there's a bit of luck. You know, you're digging for the um, cards. That's true. You don't know what marbles are going to come out I know. Euros it's a family weight game. Aren't supposed to be I mean, Phil Walker Hardy isn't so really a Euro designer. He's like more family weight designer. But I mean, it's kind of apples and oranges, whatever. Well, I guess I was meant it's Euro y in the sense that it feels kind of crunchy. No, not that, not in the crunch factor, but in the abstract way. Sure. I mean, it's kind of. Like it's abstract this, it's, it's it's pretty abstract, basically. Okay. But uh, in that game, I think it totally works. It's fun because it's that race to whoever gets 16 cards and also the most points. So there's this nice, not quite a race element, but it's like, you know, if someone managed to trigger the end of the game before you built those really juicy level three cards, it can be very like, ah, I was so close. The oh, thing. yeah, that makes me think this also a, a little bit. Times. That's the, what I like about Animal Kingdom so much. Mm -hmm. The thing of the, you, you're not going to be it's able to fixed, rally because. Fixed number of rounds, you yeah. know, it's just boom. And I just have a couple more because um, okay. it's a lot of the same suspects. Um, oh, no, we did another new to us no, this was not new to us. This was new to Jamila, but we played it with Jamila for the first time this month. Gingerbread House, another Phil Walker Harding game, which I praise be. I think that's my favorite Phil Walker Harding game. That one is so much fun. I I, I might have to agree with you on that. Yeah, so that's the one where you're you are a witch in that game. Come, 
And um, <laughs> you're trying to get, you're trying to make sure that those damn fairy tale characters keep on trying to eat your freaking house. And um, you, you're going to trap them and eat them, obviously. Put them in a pie. Turn them into gingerbread. That's not explicit in the game, but I'm pretty sure it's implied that we're eating these fairy tale characters. And it's really interesting because you have this little 3D tile placement action selection system. Like you're building up the layers of the house and the icons you cover up allow you to get like resources or actions. You know why that's my favorite Phil Walker Harding game? The stacking the, the no, tiles. No, it's the most really Euro-y of his games because it's really about resource management and contract mm -hmm. fulfillment with the paying for the character cards to get the points and you feel very clever as you're trying to build up your house and set things up so that you, because if you cover two of the same icon, you can get like plus one to whatever yeah. you're doing. Okay, so what I like about Phil Walker Harding as a designer is I feel like everything like when he's designing the games everything is intentional and you can not only Very is it intentional but yes it's streamlined it's like efficient like his games are very efficient. They don't have more mechanisms than you need. Like some games. Which makes them easy to learn and get into because, yeah. again, they're, all his games are really meant to be family weight games that you could play with kids and teach to kids. Um, you know, not like super little kids, but like, you know, like Older eight kids. to ten. And like Stella and Wesley's age. It fits that good niche for us because they're good getting, get out games, but they pack a lot of a strategic depth. It's yeah, the amount his of time games you're always do. They're not like hugely complicated, but he manages to get the most effect. The decision the, space, yeah, he creates with the fewest amount of just drag. You know, some games just like create too much drag. You're never going to be into the Euros like I am. I totally get it. If you're going to have a favorite designer, I'm glad that it's someone of such quality. Yeah. Another dad. We like our daddy designers. We do like our daddy designers. I've written a letter to daddy. Save the best for last. We finally got it off the shelf of shame. We've been doing so good with our shelf of shame, you guys. Lacrimosa. Oh, that's All right. hail Mozart. He's dead. Are you sure that was in May? Was it the yes. very last day of May or something? No, it was like the last couple of weeks. You played it twice because I played it solo and then I played oh, it yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Now, I just said you're not really ever going to be into Euro games, but that is a Euro game. I'm surprised that you liked as much as you did. I, it's, it's a it's a chonker. He's a chonky boy. The only the only thing but that was crazy learn. about that game is that unlike other Euros, which can be almost too colorful, like, uh, you know, Castles of Burgundy, and you're, like, looking at, it looks like a Persian rug. It's, like, the in your face. But the map is, it's all sepia yeah. tone. It's so all Rococo style art, so some things are difficult to see. And the board is so huge, because yeah, it's one nice. of those portrait style boards. Mm -hmm. That's like this, Long. and the cards you can't. I, have to, I had to keep on I know. getting up. Yeah. I had to physically yeah. get up just to get to the card market. No, that's the only criticism I have. It. Otherwise, it was good. But... I love slipping the cards into the I little know. I did the, too. the recessed board, so it's a card tucking game essentially. So on your turn, I love it. It's so simple and streamlined in the sense of what you're doing on your turn, because in each round you have um, nine cards that are your action cards that you're gonna be able to do. So you pick two cards from your hand, one to do the action, and you slide it in to do the action on the top, and one you slide into um, this pocket under there, and that's for the resource. So you're deciding, okay, which ones am I gonna use for the resource? Which ones am I gonna use for the action? And throughout the game, you can upgrade the cards to make those actions sweeter and juicier. But what's really kind of, I think, really puts you in that really good tight decision space is you only have 20 actions in the whole game. You're only going to yeah. play 20 cards and get 20 resources. And you have to figure out how to do all this stuff. Because there's area control. The way the area control with the completing the Requiem works mm -hmm. is really interesting. Because it's just a lot of point salad and resource management. Typical Euro stuff. But I thought that mechanism with tucking the cards and just how thematic 
the whole thing is. I just love so much. And obviously I'm a classical musician, so Mozart, I could not have this game, but I was really worried I wasn't going to like it. Like it wasn't going to live up to my expectations. I was worried that I wasn't going to like it too, just because like... It's so easy to get into because what you're yeah, doing on your turn is so true. simple. And once you understand the iconography and the five possible actions that you have, it's just a lot of wash, rinse, repeating, and you're just trying to get the bonus tiles and you're but trying to come I think the it's the, the, the shortness, like you said, of the game with it being fancy trends. That, that, I like that as uh, something that can be a part of game design where it's more of a fixed ending. Uh -huh. And honestly, I think that's better because it moves it along. It keeps it from getting, you know, tiresome. Dragged out. Yeah. Especially because you are doing the same things. Yeah, there's a little bit of an arc to the game because in each age, it's five rounds, which are the five like periods of Mozart's life. And so the cards that are coming out get incrementally better and different, especially the opus cards start to become juicier as you get later and later into Mozart's life. So there are things that change throughout the game and things start to become juicier, but you know, it is very much, there's a lot about it that is kind of a by the numbers Euro, but I like it because it's not any more convoluted than it needs to be. It feels very synergized. Yeah, yeah it does. And it's not like everything is there because it needs to be there. Honestly, the if they gave a award in these, you know, game awards, if they gave one for most ingenious use of a theme, it would be Lacrimosa. It's definitely it's a game just... where it feels like they started with the theme. Did yeah, the I think they did too. The theme. And they're like, well, how are we going to simulate being a composer and writing music? And I'll tell you how selling your music <laughs> you're just selling 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 but it selling or like performing it. yeah i i feel like it's like, definitely as... felt like i was like mozart trying to make a buck yeah <laughs> traveling yeah. around europe just trying to make a buck trying to suck up to royals and just like you know make a living as a composer because it's Honestly, hard because i was like i need money right now me. damn i need resources okay well it's time to sell this my beautiful opus i made with my sister nanarol okay bye on to the next thank you next but Plight of music they're musicians. doing that means that you're you're not going to get juicy points for those cards at the end of the game. So the reason you ended up winning is because you kept more of your opus cards than I did. Mm. Taking enough of those bonus tiles from the central map of the board, I think we each, I was, the, you didn't take any. And I had like a couple, but one of them I couldn't even score at the end again because I sold all my music. <laughs> well, there was enough going on. You know, when I'm learning a game for the, I've only um, played, wait, you said I played Rock Cremo, so just once. Just I thought, once. So far. Yeah, yeah. But when I'm, you know, when you're first learning a game, I don't like to make it any more comp. Like I try to go with just the main. It's like it's like if you took a trip and you just yeah. stuck to all the. It's main really roads. about completing the requiem. Like that's where you get the. I don't want to say the majority of the points, but you need to contribute to the requiem if you want to do well in that game. And that's sure. what I was trying to do. Yeah, so I like it's a more focused euro. It's not just like you know some euros are like oh this over here and this over here, and you're like how is this all connected? You know, yeah. It's just you know that's why they call it point salad. You know, and that game is it kind of, it is technically point salad, but it doesn't feel like point salad. No, you know because I mean? you feel purposeful in the mm -hmm. in the game actions that you're taking. Excellent thematic integration. A plus plus, and we're gonna play it again. And I'm glad it's a good euro to add to to the rotation. I'm very happy about that. So that was May, as you can see. Lots busy. of gaming, busy, busy, lots of gaming. I think June will still be good, you know, because we'll be going to RageCon at the end of June. And in the meantime, remember, be gay, do crime, don't get caught, and mm, get, get gay people. Man. We the people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What he said. Which what yeah, they I'm not said. feeling too I'm not feeling too manly today. That's why. So I said what they said. <laughs> okay, go turn off. Hopefully, you didn't die. So are we? How, how done are we? I need a chalkboard. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> What's his name? Yeah, but well, it, it, it looks more like it. It, it looks... eats goats. It drinks the blood of goats. Oh, it looked kind of like a chihuahua. It's... Like on crack. I also taught... Chihuahuas are already on crack. So.
So on the last weekend, Sean, <laughs> and bananas. Did you say bananas? I did. How many times have you said bananas? I think that makes the fourth time. Speaking of unholy things, like Mariah Carey. Yes. We went and saved the best for last. Oh, God, we needed to work Mariah Carey in oh, this video. So it's, it's, Are it's you that bitch?